Welcome to Survey Matters with Duncan Parnell. My name is Mark White and I'm the training and support manager for DP. Today I want to talk to you guys about adjusting a Traverse and Trimble Business Center. Now we're going to start a new series here. It's the end of 2025 and in these last couple of months of 2025, I want to put together a little playlist on the basics in Trimble Business Center. So be sure that you like this video and subscribe so you get notifications every time a new video comes out. So we're going to start a playlist on our YouTube channel for Trimble Business Center, just covering kind of some of the basic functions that you would use. Have a few videos on setting up projects and templates, importing data, editing your data. This one will cover adjusting a traverse. I wanted to start with that one because it's one I needed to update for a little while and we get a lot of customer questions. So we're going to start with this one. And then, like I said, we're going to create some on setting up projects, creating templates, importing data, editing your data. I uh, obviously adjust Traverse. We'll look at, you know, GPS processing, things like that, and even get into some point cloud stuff in TVC. So be sure that you subscribe so that uh, you get notified anytime we come out with these new videos. We're going to work on this, you know, here at the end of 2025, try to update our, our videos on Trimble Business Center there. So be sure you subscribe and get those notifications. All right. So like I said, today we're going to start off with adjusting a traverse. And we're going to start with a simple closed traverse. Now you see here on the screen in TBC, I've got a, uh, a six station traverse there. It doesn't look too big, but this is actually about a 20 acre boundary. Um, each leg's are, you know, close 650, 700 feet long there. So it is a fairly sizable uh, traverse for a small traverse but it's a simple closed traverse where the instrument was set up on point number two to begin with and back siding number one. And then we traversed this way around the property and sat the gun on number one and closed the traverse to number two. All right. Now, if you're familiar with Trimble software in Trimble Access, the easiest thing to do um, and, and some software doesn't work like this. Like a lot of times guys will close and they'll shoot point number one and they'll call it a different point number. Then they'll move up to that shoot point number two and call it a different point number. You know, it is point number one and it is point number two. So Trimble expects you to use the proper point number. So as I traverse around, when I get to number six and I'm back sighting number five and I'm going to come over and sight number one, that is nail number one. So in access, I can call that nail number one when it pops up and tells you the point already exists. Just choose to store another. All right. And the same thing when I move the instrument up to number one and back sight number six and turn back to number two to close my traverse. Again, call it point number two. That's what it is. And choose store another. And then what TBC is going to do is it's going to look at that and it's going to say, hey, there's two observations for number one. There's two observations for number two, and it's going to use that to calculate your closing error and use that information to balance and adjust your traverse there. OK, so now if you didn't do that in the field, you would simply have to merge number number one with whatever point number it was, merge number two with whatever point number it was. All right. But it's easier if you just kind of do that in the field. All right. So now that I've got my traverse in, I'm ready to go ahead and adjust it. Let's check out our traverse adjustment settings first. That's going to be up here at the top in the quick access toolbar. If I go to project settings and then computations and under computations, I will have traverse. The first two are manual horizontal tolerance and manual vertical tolerance. And I'll show you when we go into adjust traverse, you can set to adjust your traverses automatically or manually um, automatically means whenever data comes into the project that has an effect on your traverse like coordinates for the control points get updated then it's going to automatically readjust your traverse if that's set to manually then you have to go back in and recompute it and what these numbers are is this is how much that data would have to change before it warns you that you need to recompute all right. So you can set this for whatever you need to. Obviously, it's a very small number. And this this is not whether your your traverse is good or not at that number. It's just if new data comes into the job and it has an effect on your traverse and it's going to change it by more than this amount and you've got it set to manually adjust, then it's going to warn you that you need to go in there and recompute. OK, 
So the next item is your maximum angle mix closure per station. It defaults to four seconds. You can leave it at that or you could tighten that up or make it a little bit looser depending on what your standards are. But in this example, I've got six stations. So that's going to give me at four seconds per station, 24 seconds of misclosure closure before TBC throws a flag. All right. Then I've also got my minimum horizontal precision and minimum vertical precision. This is just where TBC is going to throw a flag if my closure is less than this in precision for horizontal and vertical. So you could change this depending on your needs. Maybe you only need to close one in 20,000 horizontally. You could change that there, or you might need it a little bit higher. Again, this is where it's going to throw a flag for you. And then whether or not you use weighted means. So if that's set to yes, then the weight is going to be proportional to the number of individual observations. If you set that to no, it's just going to be a combined simple mean. Okay. So normally you're going to leave that to yes. So if you have more observations on one point, it's going to weight towards that point. Okay. So you can generally leave these settings where they are, but obviously tweak them if you need to. Okay. Once those settings are set correctly, we'll click OK. And then we're ready to go to the survey tab at the top and choose adjust traverse. This is going to bring up the traverse pane. And the first thing we need to do is name our traverse because you can have multiple traverses in the same project. So you will name our traverse there. I'll call this boundary and tell TBC I want to create this. Now what TBC is going to do is it's going to look for your first station setup. All right, in the first place the instrument was set up in this project was on number two. And if I come over here and look in my Project Explorer, uh, that's going to be at the Home tab in Project Explorer. If it's not up on your screen, you can go there. But if I expand my imported files there, you can see the stations in the order that they were uh, set up out in the field. And you can see that two was first, then we went to three, four, five, six. Finally, we sat on one and closed back to two. So... TBC is going to automatically look for that. You could change that if you needed to. And then you can hit the plus to add the next one. And again, TBC is going to look chronologically at your data, pick what it thinks was the next station set up. You can change that if you needed to, again, with the drop down. If that's good, just hit the plus button and it's going to add the next one. Now, after you get about two or three of them in there, it's going to automatically try to select all the station setups. So when I hit plus there, boom, it goes around and it selects them all, right? If there was something in there that you needed to change, then you can hit the trash can and go back and select it and select your stations. If, if TBC gets to a fork where maybe you had a little spur line going off to one side and the traverse going the other way, it'll stop there and ask you which way you want to go. It'll make you select it, okay? But in a simple closed traverse like this, once we get three stations in there, it's able to determine the rest of the traverse and automatically put those in there. All right. So the next thing we need to do is look at our uh, start orientation and our end orientation. So again, the first station up here at the top is number two. My first backsite was number seven. It's automatically going to put the azimuth in there. If you need to change that azimuth for some reason, maybe you need to update it. You can do that here and it will take care of that for you there. And then my, my foresight, the instrument was on one foresighting two, so that's correct. Again, I could change it if I needed to, and I could change the azimuth if I needed to. But you'll see that's reciprocal, 180 degrees, so that is where I want to go. Let me move my picture out of the way a little bit if I can here. There we go. Move it up to the top. And then I get to set my angle, vertical, horizontal settings down here at the bottom. So I can adjust the angles proportional to distance or by equal proportions. So I'm going to choose proportional to distance so it weights them a little bit more depending on how long the legs are. Or you can set that to equal or you can set it to none if you don't want it to adjust it. We do want to adjust it. I'm going to use proportional. Now this particular traverse does not have vertical in it. So I'm going to set my vertical to none. But again, you could do that proportionally to distance, or you could do that in equal proportions. And we can choose between a compass and bow ditch, which considers angles and distances to be measured with the same precision and accuracy. Or you could do transit, which considers the angles to be measured more accurately than the distances. 
with modern total stations, you know, we're able to measure the angles and the distances both very well. With older equipment, when we were pulling steel tapes, you know, we considered that we did the angles or we were able to measure the angles with a theodolite a little bit better than we could measure the distance with a steel tape. But now that we're using modern total stations, we can use the compass bow ditch method, which considers both of them equal. All right. And then here's where I talked about earlier, where you can adjust automatically or manually. I like to do it manually, but you can set it to adjust automatically so that, it, again, if new data were to come in that were to affect your control points, affect the traverse, it would automatically recompute that. Um, otherwise, it's going to warn us based on those uh, settings that we looked at earlier that we need to recompute it there. And then also we can choose whether or not we want it enabled. Obviously we're adjusting the traverse, so we do want it enabled, right? Now I'm gonna move my, uh, my picture back here to the bottom real quick. And before we actually adjust it, I want to click up here at the top where it says preview results. And that's gonna show us all our results here. So that's going to give us all the information up here at the top that we put in our stations. Slide myself over to the side over here so we can look at everything. I uh, see our stations. We can see our before adjustment where we get our angular misclosure. So in this case, we had 14 seconds. That's why we don't have a flag. Remember, we had it set to four seconds, six stations. So if it had been out of more than 24 seconds, it would have thrown a flag warning us that we didn't meet that precision level. Um, our northing misclosure was 300s. Our easting misclosure is 500s. No vertical. Said that earlier. So our total horizontal misclosure is um, 0.062 hundredths. And then our traverse length there, 42.49. And our before adjustment or our raw horizontal precision is 1 in 68,201. So pretty good traverse there. No flags on that because our precision was set at 50,000, right? Now, what it's telling us is after it does the angular adjustment, we've got a little over a hundredth in the northing, a little over almost five hundredths in the easting. Our total horizontal misclosure is now 0.048, and our total horizontal precision after angular adjustment is 1 in 88,052. So adjusting those angles made it a little bit better there, or closure a little bit better. And then after distance adjustment, our northing and easting are flat, and we did have about two seconds of post rotation that we had to do with that uh, with that distance adjustment there. So if you're happy with these results, you can go ahead and apply it, and that will adjust your traverse. So once I hit the apply button here, you'll see the screen flash. I can close this now, and. If I click on the screen, you'll see my traverse has gone from green lines to purple, just to give you a visual indication that this is adjusted now. And you'll see that the points that were adjusted now have little control symbols on them to let you know that, hey, these are adjusted points. So if you need to use those as control, they're ready to go there. Now, if I come over here to my Project Explorer and expand out my traverse network, left click on it to select it and then right click i can look at the traverse adjustment report and this will pull up a nice report that i can look at and i can also print out for my survey files or save for my electronic survey files there and this is going to have all that information that we looked at in the preview right it's got our endpoint orientations beginning and end there it's got all our pre-adjustment error, before adjustment, you'll see there's our 24 seconds we were allowed and we had 14 seconds there. Our length of traverse, our misclosures, at, whoops, after angular adjustment, after distance adjustment. And then if I scroll down, I'll actually get the table that shows that two was the only fixed point. So we held two, right? That was our beginning point where the instrument was. We held that. We adjusted all those interior angles and all the distances on the legs. So all the other points were adjusted, two was held fixed, and this is the information on how much it was adjusted by. Now, if we had done vertical, we'd have tables that would show the vertical adjustment as well. So I'll scroll down a little bit more, and it also gives us a nice picture at the end. All right, then once we're done with that, we can come up here to the export button. We can print it out here, 
or we could export it and save it as an Excel file, a PDF or a Word file. And that way we could save it off in our survey folder and, and have a record of it there. All right. So I'll go ahead and close this out now. So we've got our traverse adjusted and we're ready to do any more survey work we need to do on the job here. So that's the end of this video. Like I said, be sure to subscribe because we're going to come out with a, with a little series of videos to show you, you know, little things like this that you can do in TBC, some basic getting started type stuff over the next few weeks here at the end of 2025. So be sure to subscribe so you get notified. Thanks for coming to Survey Matters and I'll see you on the next one.